Council members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First, it's an honor and a pleasure to be invited here. I'm representing the ESC Council of Hypertension. And as we have already discussed, hypertension and atrial fibrillation and stroke has a close relation. My disclosures all outside the presented work. Uh, and what I would like to cover in these 10 or 12 minutes is basically hypertension in acute stroke. Some things are clear, so some things are unclear, and uh, I will cover first, of course, hypertension is a major risk factor for hemorrhagic and ischemic stroke. We all know that. We all also know that blood pressure is often elevated at presentation with acute stroke, but it often declines without intervention, so we can just wait and see. If we have the acute hemorrhagic stroke, an increased blood pressure is very common. It is associated with hematoma expansion, with increased mortality, with worse prognosis of neurological recovery, and also with uh, an impaired depend uh, dependency. In ischemic stroke, as compared to a hemorrhagic one, in ischemic stroke, blood pressure is elevated in most patients, but it often decreases already within hours. And unfortunately, the blood pressure management during the acute phase of hemorrhagic stroke remains uncertain. And the benefit for treating ischemic stroke is even less clear. Finally, hypertension is a risk factor for recurrent stroke, but the optimal blood pressure target in secondary prevention is not really well established. And just a few slides on these different issues. First, uh, acute intracerebral hemorrhage. This is the INTERACT-2 study, which I didn't hide on purpose up on top of the slide. I'm sorry about that. In this study, as you may know, immediate blood pressure lowering to below 140 within an hour and maintain for a week or standard treatment, which was then lowering blood pressure to below 180 millimeters of systolic blood pressure was uh, done in some 3,000 patients. And the bottom findings are that, sorry, uh, the primary outcome was, which was death or major disability was not significantly different. Secondary outcomes in terms of ranking scale and health-related quality of life tended to be improved with uh, stronger or quicker blood pressure reduction, and mortality was similar. So the conclusion from this study is that treatment is feasible, it is safe, and it's a modest functional recovery. If you go to the other study with a similar layout, which is attached to, actually these authors uh, managed to reduce blood pressure strongly here, and you see the two groups, although the aim was the same as in the previous study, the blood pressure lowering was strong within the first day or two. Here, the primary outcome, which again was death or disability, was not significantly different, but there was a trend for reducing hematoma expansion, and there was a trend or a weak significance for uh, more serious adverse events if you lower blood pressure more quickly. So the conclusion for this study would be that there is no effect on the primary outcome, but there are more uh, adverse events, at least renal adverse events, within the first week. So if you try to summarize these studies on the management in interest in uh, cerebral hemorrhage, and this is taken from the American hypertension guidelines, which are now just a year old. I think they nicely summarize that if you have an acute hemorrhage presenting within six hours, if you have a blood pressure above 220 millimeters of mercury, there is some evidence that you should lower blood pressure by intravenous drugs and close blood pressure monitoring. It's a class 2A recommendation. But if you have a blood pressure below one tw uh, 220 millimeters of systolic, there is actually 
no benefit and there is a potential harm in adverse uh, effects. This may be a conservative interpretation of the data, but this is how the Americans, at least, uh, interpreted the data. If we move then to ischemic stroke, the fact is that the potential benefit of blood pressure reduction in the acute phase is even less clear than in acute intercerebral hemorrhage. But here the key consideration is whether the patient will receive thrombolytic therapy or not, of course. And there are observational studies reporting that increased risk of intracerebral hemorrhage with thrombolysis is present if you have a markedly elevated blood pressure, not surprisingly. Uh, but again, the benefit of blood pressure lowering is uncertain. This is a recent publication, came out last year on uh, a large American registry of some 300,000 patients with ischemic stroke. And I think it clearly shows that the relation on outcome and admission blood pressure is J-shaped. That goes for uh, uh, that goes for mortality, for discharge not to home, for independency, or for complications of thrombolytic therapy. So there is a J-shaped curve that is true for systolic blood pressure and also on your right-hand side for diastolic blood pressure. The next slide from the same registry shows something that I think is forgotten often, and that is the relation with pulse pressure. And as you see, again, there is a relation with pulse pressure, and pulse pressure is a cheap but rather a nice way of uh, evaluating aortic stiffness. So if you have stiff, stiff vessels, you have large pulse pressures, and then you, of course, have high risk of complications. Because otherwise, diastolic blood pressure is not really the problem for bleeding, but a low diastolic blood pressure and a high systolic pressure, then you have stiff arteries, and then you have high risk. But pulse pressure seems to be too simple to be used by clinicians today. This is a meta-analysis uh, now three years ago on blood pressure lowering an outcome in ischemic stroke. I'm sorry that it's not a perfectly clear uh, uh, copy of the publication. The bottom line here is that if you look into short-term or long-term dependency, there is absolutely no effect if you look into uh, uh, prominent or slower blood pressure reduction. On your right-hand side, if you look on short-term or long-term mortality, again, it is the similar outcome whether you have intensive or standard blood pressure treatment. And in these studies, the average difference here was 8 over 4 millimeters of mercury, again suggesting that blood pressure lowering in acute ischemic stroke may not have influence on dependency or mortality. Summarizing again, then, in ischemic stroke, again, the American guidelines here on your right is the summary flow chart here, showing that if you have a, a blood pressure that is high, it is, uh, sorry, if you have a, a case where you uh, intend to give thrombolytic therapy, you have to reduce blood pressure to below 180 over 110 or 15, and that should be done, and there is evidence for that. If you don't treat patients with thrombolytic therapy and you have very high blood pressures, there is some evidence to have a slow and careful blood pressure reduction, but if you have blood pressures below 220, uh, then the evidence is weak and there is potential harm to do this because of adverse events. So, talking about drugs for IV treatment, I just want to promote this consensus document that was written by 
Uh, a few of the ESC Council came out uh, earlier last year uh, at the ESC Congress on um, uh, hypertensive emergencies. And uh, I think it's quite useful that there is a table, an extensive table with intravenous drugs available in Europe that can be used in hypertensive emergencies. And for the case of stroke, the literature seems to recommend either labetalol or nicardipine because these are the drugs that have been used. But probably the point is to reduce blood pressure and not really by which drug. But these seems to be the drugs most populate, uh, uh, mostly recommended because of their use in stroke patients. And finally, a few words about blood pressure reduction and secondary stroke prevention. This is, again, a recent meta-analysis from Greece by Katsanos showing that in a dozen or so of randomized controlled studies on antihypertensive treatment, secondary prevention, there is a relation between achieved systolic blood pressure and outcome, whether it's recovery stroke, uh, myocardial infarction, cardiovascular death, or all-cause mortality. So the lower the blood pressure, basically, the better the prognosis in secondary prevention. Uh, and uh, this means that in secondary prevention, we may summarize the evidence, again, using the American guidelines here, that if you have a stroke and you consider secondary prevention, if the patient is hypertensive, you should start again with blood pressure lowering therapy, not immediately, but within a few days. Uh, if this, this patient has no known hypertension, but appears to have an elevated blood pressure here defined as 140, 90 or more, initiate antihypertensive therapy if blood pressure is lower, then there is no evidence to do this. Target blood pressure here is suggested to be below 130 over 80. The evidence is rather weak. It's a 2B uh, recommendation from the American associations. So this is my summary slide. This is the European Society of Cardiology and European Society of Hypertension Guidelines on Hypertension. Nice enough, they are by and large very similar to the American uh, recommendations. Uh, and as you see, they start up with acute intracerebral hemorrhage. Immediate blood pressure lowering is not recommended for patients with a systolic blood pressure below 220. It's a class three level A, so it's a strong recommendation. If the patient has a blood pressure higher or equal to 220, therapy should be considered to go below 180. In ischemic stroke patients, routine blood pressure lowering is not recommended with the following exceptions, and that is then patients eligible for thrombolytic therapy, where below 180 over 15 for at least 24 hours is recommended, and in patients with markedly elevated blood pressure, that is 220 or higher, care for blood pressure reduction should be considered, uh, but then about a 15% reduction during the first 24 hours, which is slow. In patients with an acute event, treatment is recommended. These are strong recommendations. In a TIA, immediately after ischemic stroke, several days, similar basically to what we heard about anticoagulant therapy. And target blood pressure, according to the European guidelines, are the same as for all other patients. That is 120. 130 over 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury. And the matter is blood pressure, but a ROS blocker and the calcium channel blocker or a thiazide should be part of the recommended drug regimen according to the European recommendations. And with this, I thank you for your listening.